Hello there, and welcome to yet another video about an AppSumo product. In this particular uh, video, me, Nathan Wrigley from WP Builds, is going to be having a look at StepShot Guides, which at this exact moment is not available on AppSumo, but no doubt later on it shall be. Right, okay, so this is not your usual AppSumo deal because this one is not a SaaS product that you can't find it online. You have to actually install it onto your Mac or PC. Uh, if you can see my screen, you've probably figured out that I've got a Mac. So this is what it looks like on a Mac and I'm just gonna walk you through it. Now, what is it? It's a an application which allows you to basically set up very quick, rapid, PDF documents um, and potentially WordPress web pages with a sort of point and click interface. And the idea is that if you've got a process that you need to explain to somebody, this allows you to do it quickly rather than having to use Photoshop and screen capture tools. This does it all in, in, in a much, much faster way. So let me show you how it works. When you've signed up for your account and you've installed the app and you've logged in and put in your license code and all of that good stuff, this is what you see. Now, it's a very simple, minimal interface. You've got a section over here where you can log into your online account. That's very minimal. All it does really is allow you to download the app and a couple of other things. Um, the main stuff is up here. Now, at the moment, I just a second ago, I clicked Start a New Project. I had a button here and a button here which said uh, Load an Old Project, which I've never done, and Start a New Project. So I click the Start a New Project button, and this is the screen that you get to. Now, the menu items are all arranged at the top, um, including the name of the project here, which I can edit, and I will call this one Step Shot Test. Okay, and Submit. You can see that it changes up there. So this is now not saved because it's got the little asterisk at the top. You've got file options, which will make go away, edit options, and export and publish options. Now that export and publish options is just one of these ones here. It's just this menu item here, same thing. So let's make it do something, shall we? Right. The main thing that you want it to do is this button here. This is the ability to repeatedly take screenshots upon mouse click. So I'll show you how that works. So it's going to ask me if it's okay for my Mac to, to do this kind of stuff. And it's going to ask me to set up my accessibility settings. I presume on Windows, it's the same. I had to go through and tick a box in a Mac um, settings panel, which I've done and now I can just click continue. And when we do that, it's going to, sort of decide for a moment what we're going to do. Now, in my case, uh, on the Mac, you get this little floating window which appears and you can stop the whole process by clicking this. You can pause the process by clicking this and it's asking me here, what do I want to capture? And it's saying, do you want to capture a screen, an active window or a region? Well, in my case, having two monitors, the region was on the other monitor, but I've dragged in the region. If I click on capture a screen now, you'll notice the region goes away. So at, the, at this moment, it's capturing the entire screen. Well, like I said, I just want to capture a region. Now on my particular computer, this, this web page is too big. It's actually um, my WP Builds web page. So I'm gonna move that across to the side and I'm going to capture this region here. Now, we're just gonna pretend that I'm doing something important on my website that I need people to, to follow the instructions for. So that there is the section that I want to appear in my documents, okay? And let's pretend that I want somebody to enter the, the latest competition on WP Builds, right? Okay, so here we go. We, we've we already started. So now, when I go into here and I click with the mouse, although you won't really detect anything happening, things will be happening. So I'm gonna click right at the, bottom of this logo. So I'm going to click. And I don't know if you noticed over here, but a little screenshot appeared. Now I can change the step title. So let's just call this, well, let's call this number one. And I could write a description here. So I shall write number one description. Obviously that could be anything you like. Now at this point, what I want to do is I want to go over here and tell people to click on the competitions button. So I'm gonna go right over to there, right to the edge of that and click again. And now it's captured another screenshot and I will call this 
step number two. I'm not going to write a description each time. Now, because I now want to actually click this button and I don't want any screenshot to be captured, I'm going to pause it, click on the button, wait for that page to load um, off my website. Now I've got the page that I want. I'm going to resume all of this stuff over here. So here we go. It's now capturing again. And let's say that I want people to notice this stuff over here with the rules of the competition and the title of the competition. So I'm going to put my mouse just here and click the button and it's captured step number three. And let's say now I want them to click on this button here. This could be my step number four. So over there we go, click step number four. And you don't have to put these titles and so on in. Now I want to pause because I do actually want them to click on this button. So let's click on it. So now it's not captured that. Okay, and let's resume. Okay, now I want them to do things over here. So let's let's click uh, in this little section where it says name because I want people to fill in their name and email address. So let's click in name. Okay, and I could type in number five there, but I think I'll stop for now. Let's click in the email field. And let's click the enter now section, put my little mouse there. And that'll be it. There's my seven page document. Okay, so now I've captured seven screenshots in the way that you've just seen. I'm going to click stop. Now the app opens up again, step shot opens up and what you can see now on the left hand side is a panel of all those seven images. Okay. Now you'll notice that the app has saved a shot of where my mouse was at that exact moment. So well, this is a sort of fake mouse, if you like, because you can actually uh, kind of reposition it, but I'm going to put it back where it was. Now it also gave it a little yellow circle. Now that yellow circle, you can change the, the color of over here as you can with all the elements. So let's make it a very sort of faded green. Well, that's not much good because you can't really see through it. Let's go for something a little bit paler. Oh, goodness me, let's go for that. Okay, great. So now what I'm trying to show here is that the app saved my mouse click position. And if we go to the next one, it saved it over here. That was exactly where we clicked. Now I could, if I don't like this yellow um, circle, I could simply hover over it and delete it. It's kept my little mouse, but it's got rid of the circle. I could undo that if I wish to, whoops, redo, sorry. If I want to put it back in, oh no, undo. Oh no, that's not undo. I apologize. That's simply going back uh, a page up in the tree here on the left. So let's go into edit and click undo. No, don't know why. It's just undoing the steps. Never mind. So it, it, certainly as far as I can see, it deletes that when you do it. Okay. And if we just click through, look, my mouse was there when I clicked the button. Uh, let's go through here. My mouse was here and so on. You get the idea in each of the cases, my mouse was in exactly the place where you see it. And look up here. Here's the, let's go to step two. Here's the title and the description. Here we have the title and I only wrote a description in there. Now, the great thing about this is it's obviously saved all of those steps, which I can then export them into a PDF document. Now I could, if I wanted, clone this page, delete this page, uh, save, or I could actually, if I wanted, I could import a different image. Now let's say that I screwed something up and in step three, I actually wanted something completely different. Well, what you can do is you can say, okay, let's go back in and let's let's just take a screen grab. So what happens here is this tool appears and let's say I just want step three to be this text. Okay, let go, click return. And now that text is actually dropped in at the bottom, but it would be easy enough for me to drag it in to this area. Now, Let's just talk about the editing options. So up here, we can select everything that's on the screen and you can see little um, markers come around everything. I can, you know, move things about if I want. I can change various things like colors and so on. So I've selected everything. Well, let's deselect by clicking. I can draw shapes. So for example, if I want to highlight this part, I can draw a rectangle. Now at the moment, the fill, 
is really getting in the way. So I'm going to click no fill and I would like the outline to be orange and I will give it a wide weight. So it basically just makes it thick like that. Okay. Uh, I can do a, a rectangle with a curvy border like that, more of a lozenge type of thing. Put it in the particular place that you want it. Circles or ovals, you get the idea. There they are. You can put those in places as well. You can draw lines. You can draw arrows. You, this is now this is my favorite tool. We'll come back to this sequence in a moment. You can highlight areas. Sorry, you can blur things out. So let's say, for example, I don't want anybody to read that text there. There it's gone. You can put text in. Now, I think this tool needs a bit of work because what you do is you drag an area and then you type text into it. Now, for the life of me, I can't quite work out. I can change the text color. And I can remove the outline, but I can't figure out how to make that text a different size, even by dragging on the corners. All that it does is increase or decrease the size of that box that it's in. So if you can figure that out, that'd be great. I'd love to know. Um, okay, so that's the text tool. Obviously, you could, you know, it'd be very useful to write particular things on particular parts next to an arrow, wouldn't it? Okay, click this link or something. Uh, this is the highlight tool. So if I want to highlight this section, you can just highlight it with a particular color. Again, you can change those here. So let's make it a transparent. Uh, let's have a border there and a sort of transparency green in the middle. And then, of course, you know, you could alter your arrow so that it was actually pointing over there. It's getting a bit messy, this, isn't it? But there you go. And lastly, you can crop the whole thing. So you could just say, do you know what? I don't want all of that nonsense. I just wish to have this bit here. And that step has now just become this bit. It's a dreadful mess, but there you go. Over here is options to replace the image, delete this image. It's basically the same stuff as appears in the little box up here, as far as I can see. Now, my favorite thing though, is this tool. This is the sequence tool. And what it allows you, now this is just gonna save you so much time. Let's say you've got a sequence of things you want people to do on a particular page. Now it could be, you know, remember this is coming off your screen, so it could be a Word document or a PDF or anything. Click on the sequence and just click, 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 click. Very cool. It adds in numbered steps. Now each time you click, it's going to add another one. If I delete one, now I should turn that tool off. Delete number six, delete number five, delete number four, and put it back on again. Hopefully, if it's got any common sense, the next one will be four again and not seven. Perfect, number four. Now we can change by selecting all. We could change, now I'm going to assume this is going to work. I don't know if it will work. Change the outline color, change the fill color, and all of a sudden everything looks ghastly. Really hideous, but that's not really the point. So anyway, there you go. You can imagine that just this particular step, you know, if you had to run through five or six steps, doing that is just gonna save you loads of time. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five. Insert a little bit of text, draw some arrows, draw some things, boxes, and so on. Now, let's go to these things. So this is the name of our uh, document, it's called Stepshot test. We can give it an author and a description. You can upload a logo if you like. You can start a new project, open an old project. It saves in a proprietary file format, like a .doc and a .ppt, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I can save it, save as, show you my settings. Now, you've got some screenshot hotkeys. So on mine, if you do Command Shift S, it will actually start and end the session rather than having to use the little window which popped up. You can capture the active screen capture the active window, capture a single screenshot using those commands, but you can change the keystrokes if you like. When I click to the mouse, it drew a circle around it. Well, you can turn the circle off, or you could say, actually, I would rather it was a rectangle, and that it, it just basically put a colored rectangle around it instead. Place metadata in the step description. Uh, I can import a template so you can make your own templates. And finally, let's go to export and publish. Now I've got two options here. I can export it as a PDF 
or I can export it as a WordPress document. I'm not going to do the WordPress document. I'm just going to do export as PDF. Give it a name. Give it a author and a description. Uh, put my company logo in the PDF. Click next. And we get some styling options. Now you can obviously up, put your own um, templates in here once you've figured out how that works. But essentially, it looks to me like you get two pages per page, one per page. But obviously, this is very dependent upon the size of the screenshot that you grab. Now, mine were very big. So I'm going to cl uh, click this one because my screenshots are actually enormous and probably are going to take up one page. It says you can optimize automatically. You can use um, high DPI, high dots per, um, per inch images, scale the images and detect here what kind of image quality you want. I'm just going to click Publish. And it's saying to me, where do you want to store this on your Mac? And what do you want to call it? Well, I should just store it in this thing. And I'll call it Step Test 1. And click Save. Now, at this point, your Mac or your PC is going to whir about deciding how to get this done and getting on with it. And at this point, you have to go off and have a biscuit, lie down, eat a cookie, wax your legs, talk about cheese. You could even, you know, uh, discuss the price of Bitcoin. Um, possibly at this point, you could go out and fight a large animal or, um, you know, you could go out and try to convert somebody to your religion of choice. Anyway. Now it's completed. I've done none of those things. I've just gassed on about what you could do. I'm going to copy the path. It tells me handily where it's stored. I actually kept a track of that. But anyway, there it is. Or I could open the file. Well, in my case, I'm going to drag in my Mac Finder, which is over here somewhere. Where are your Mac Finder? Here you are. And let's find it. It's called Step something. Where's it gone? There it is. Now you can see the logo on mine is a little bit on the small side. I don't know if there's options to rotate this so it presents in landscape instead of portrait. But see, there we go. There's my little document with all the steps nicely shown. I would, would like to be able to export it um, as landscape, I think. I don't know how I might have done that. But nevertheless, you can see that all of the parts have saved exactly as you'd have expected them to save and made myself a nice little document. Presumably by templating it, you can change these colors here. The logo I have to say is really tiny, really small, but there it is. That is my quick look at StepShot. I'll drag in um, preview. I've just opened it up here and we can possibly zoom in a bit. Oh, that's not the one I want, is it? I don't want that one. I want this one. This is the one I want. Yes, this one. Right. Let's have a zoom in, see what the quality looks like when you get real close up. Come on. Yeah, the images look really crisp and clear when you get close up, so that's good news. Yeah, very clear, very easy to read. If I've failed to work out how to do landscape, I apologize. That would have been better as landscape. But there it is. That's what it exports. That's step shot. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed me making this video and you want to see many, many more. If that's the case, uh, brilliant. If not, <laughs> <laughs> bye bye.